Let's go over BenQ Wireless Hockey Puck Gen 3 so you can get the most out of this device with your SW display. This is Artist Right. This wireless hockey puck ship with BenQ SW272U and Q. They are a 27 inch hardware calibrated display for photographers with the U model having 4K resolution and the Q model having 2K. I have two SW272U on my table because I want to show one really cool feature of this wireless remote. And that is I can have one wireless remote simultaneously control multiple SW display at the very same time. Now this is really cool. And I'll also share with you some ideas how you can go in and creatively customize these setup as well. Now because this is a wireless device we need to figure out a way how to power it. On the very bottom of this device there is a cover for the battery. If you rotate this to the left you would have to put your fingernail in a little bit. You will see there are slots for two AAA batteries. To put this cover back on, it only goes back on one way. You would have to line this triangle up with the triangle on the cover, as my finger is pointing out right now. Or the easiest way to really think about this is to line the BenQ logo up with the top of the wireless hockey puck. And you will see that on the hockey puck itself, it's round, but the wireless hockey puck, the top part, is pretty much the thickest part of that wedge right there. I'm going to rotate this back and it will snap right into place. Your hockey puck is now ready to use. The way how this hockey pucks communicate with your SW display is via an IR blaster. That's pretty much the area right there that has a different color than the rest of the device itself. This is using an infrared signal and on your display, on the bottom right, there is an IR receiver. This is where it's going to receive the signal from the remote. In general, you want to have a remote in front of the display so that it is in the line of sight. When you send the signal, it will also receive it much better that way. Next to it is a toggle number one, two, and three. And this is where the magic of this remote start to come in. So for instance, you can dynamically change this throughout the day. So you can have one display correspond to number one, two, and three. But what you can simply do is have displays into different groups and you can now control different groups of SW that are on channel one, channel two, channel three, and so forth. There are multiple different ways to use this that I think is really cool and I'll go over how to do that in just a moment. In the front of the wireless hockey puck, there is a button called info. And this info button is really cool and I think is one of the best feature when combined with this hockey puck and the SW272U and Q. Press that button in the very front of the info and you're going to get this information screen that shows up. How many times have we gone in to use Palette Master Ultimate to calibrate our display, slot one, two, and three, and don't remember what settings we have? Well, that info button will tell you all the settings you have on your custom calibration from the brightness, the white point, the gamma, the color gamut, including resolution and other pertinent information as well. I think this is really cool. Now, on the very top of the device, you will also have a surface area that has multiple different buttons. From the top left, you have the loop button. This is pretty much the three dot in the triangle configuration right there. By default, this is set to loop between different inputs for your display. So because this is play at multiple different inputs, you can cycle between them. And there's also key number one, two, and three, or three, two, one, depending on how you want to read it. These pretty much correspond to different color mode by default. Number one, Adobe RGB be two srgb number three advanced black and white mode and there is a return switch so this is for you to use when you want to go back to a previous menu this is a dial itself in the center you can turn the left or right and when you press on the center it would also act as an extra button as well so first what i want to do is show you how to customize the ir setting on this remote so simply press on the center button there and we're going to go down to the fifth menu which is the person icon custom key Go into the menu by pressing the center button and choosing IR channel settings. So from here, I can choose channel one, two, or three. And let's say, for instance, my hotkey puck is not communicating. You can always change using the joystick on your display first and match those up however you want. And then once you have the channel correct, you can now come back in and use the hotkey puck to control the display. For now, I'm going to leave this as channel one. So I'm going to press the return key to go back. Next thing we want to go over is shortcut number one, two, and three. So a few things about shortcut number one, two, and three is I can change the color mode or I can also choose to change input. So if I choose input, I can choose which one I want to use. Let's say I don't want HDMI one. The moment I unselect HDMI one, you can see the HDMI two show up. But the one thing that you need to note about this is one, two, and three needs to be assigned any given time. Even though you may only use one and two, number three has to be assigned to something. And this is the same thing in the color mode as well. So what we're going to do next is go back and choose color mode. 
So in color mode, I have already gone and customized mine. Right now, Adobe RGB is on slot number three. As I go down, calibration one is one, calibration two is two. So if I want to say replace calibration two with something else, I can just go through and replace button number two by just doing that, highlighting the one that I want. Let's say I want paper color sync. I can press the center button there and assign that to number two. Now you can always go in and remove all of these customization. Let's say I want to remove one. I'm going to go and remove two. And I also remove custom number three. But now I can't exit the menu because I have to assign all these three buttons first before I can move forward. So let's go back and assign calibration one to one. And this will go in sequence at this point if you remove everything already. I'll go paper color sync to two. And let's do calibration two to number three. Why don't we do that? All right. So we're going to go back and we're going to go back one more. Now let's talk about this loop key, this triple triangle thing. This is a loop key. So the loop key, you can change it to a few things. You can do color mode. And the color mode thing is really neat because you can also set this to extend the color mode that you have set for key number one, two, and three. Let's say you don't need to change the input. This is another way how you can really go in and customize this. Now with these color modes, let's say you don't want black and white. You can also go in, disable the black and white, and now you have all these other options that shows up. So that's something you can do. The max you can select for this is three. However, I can also just leave this at two as well, and I can go out to the previous menu and it won't stop me from doing so. So the nice thing about the loop key is that you don't have to assign all three, but you can only assign up to three. Now, the next thing I want to do is go into the input menu and press the center button one more time. Right now I have USB-C, DisplayPort and HDMI 1. Let's say I don't want DisplayPort. I can just uncheck that and you will see the HDMI 2 show up because that is an option that is available, but I don't really want to use that right now. So I'm going to just leave this an input and I'm going to go back and most of the time, I'm simply going to be toggling between HDMI and USB-C. Let's say I'm going to do that. This is an instance where, let's say you want to use multiple computers with your display and you want both display to change input source at the same time. I think this is one of the quickest ways how you can do it by pressing that button once. It changes you, for example, PC to Mac or Mac to PC. And now that you have the wireless hockey puck, you only have to use one of them to control multiple SW. I think that's a really great thing. So. In a situation like this, let's say you have three SW displays, you can have two of them be on one group, channel one, and the other one being on channel two, and now you can control these displays somewhat separately. So hopefully this is giving you a little bit more ideas how you can really go in and customize your SW display control with this new wireless hockey puck. Let's go back into the menu one more time. And we have already gone over the loop key, but the other thing that the loop key can also do as well is you can set this to mute. Let's say if we use the sound function on this display, you can do it that way too. I'm going to go back and the last thing we're going to talk about is the dial. This is pretty much the dial itself. You can change so that if you're not in this menu, if you start rotating a dial, it will change the brightness, the contrast, or the volume. Now, a couple of things I want to quickly mention about the volume and mute is that the display can carry the sound signal using the various cable you have connected to your display, but the display itself, these SW do not have built in speakers. So if you're wondering, you're turning the volume up, no sounds coming out. That is the reason why. So on the back of the display, there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. If you plug that into either headphones or external speakers, you can now use the volume control function on the display to change the sound volume going out to those speakers or headphones. So just a little FYI there on the speaker function or the sound function of the display. Now, the other thing about the brightness and contrast you need to be aware of is that if you are in calibration one, two, and three, brightness and contrast would do absolutely nothing. Brightness and contrast will only work in the factory calibration mode. So that would be, for instance, the sRGB, the Adobe RGB, Rex 9 so on and so forth. Now, sometimes if you're not going to use the speaker function, but you use those factory calibration mode, but you don't want the brightness to change, it may not be a bad idea to come and trigger this to volume instead so that you don't accidentally touch or dial this key and change the luminance or the contrast on your display. So that's pretty much the wireless hotkey puck in a nutshell. So many different ways how you can customize this from the input source, from the color information. You can combine them in different ways that you like. For instance, one, two, and three can control colors. You can set this separately to control input. As I've shown you, you can eliminate certain inputs with the loop key. I think there's a lot of really good uses for this. And you're seeing this right now that 
as I go up from the menu, I can control multiple SUV displays at any given time. I think this is one of the really coolest feature that's not talked about as much on these new SW display. And there are other things as well. You can watch my full review of these display to really find out more about them. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this like, subscribe, and hit the bell renew. And in our trust.